Today on Echoes Through Time, we will explore the story of Elizabeth Bathory, known as the Blood Countess, and uncover the dark mysteries surrounding her. Elizabeth was born in 1560 in Berbather, a town in the region of Transylvania, in deep Hungary, a place marked by division and political intrigue. Elizabeth's family was one of the most prominent and powerful in Hungary at the time. The Bathory family had a long history of nobility and wealth in the region. Her uncle, Istvan Bathory, became the Prince of Transylvania and the King of Poland. This provided Elizabeth with an outstanding education for her time, studying, among other subjects, mathematics, biology, astronomy, and several languages. From an early age, Elizabeth witnessed the brutality of the era, with servants routinely beaten and public executions witnessed by her when she was just a child. At the age of 15, she was forced into marriage with Count Ferenc Nadasti, a man who spent his days fighting the Ottomans. From this marriage, three daughters and a son were born, with whom she resided at X castle However, behind her facade of nobility, a dark side lurked. A first glimpse of Elizabeth's cruelty appears in the correspondence she held with her absent husband, exchanging ideas on the most appropriate techniques for punishing the servants, showing a glimpse of the cruelty that would characterize her actions in the future. It is said that on one occasion, her husband gifted her a clawed glove as a tool to cruelly punish her servants. Elizabeth ran the castle with an iron fist and brutal beatings of the maids whom she would strike with a heavy mallet or prick with needles under their nails, or even on their lips, to name just a few of her abuses. On the other hand, Elizabeth was attracted to women, but her sadistic practices, usually involving beatings and blood, scared off the unsuspecting who initially acquiesced to her requests. The death of Ferenc in 1604 after his return from battle ill, was the definitive turning point in Elizabeth's spiral of violence. Upon becoming a widow, she unleashed all her evil. The first thing she did was to eject her mother-in-law from the castle, with whom she never had a good relationship as with the rest of her husband's relatives, and with the help of her accomplice, Darvulia, a supposed witch from the region, they created a sinister place considered by some a chamber of tortures, dedicated to the practice of black magic. Among the torture devices supposedly kept in the dungeons, was a contraption called the Iron Maiden, resembling a vertical coffin with two doors that opened to accommodate the unfortunate victims. Inside sharp and rusted nails were arranged to impale various parts of the body as soon as the double door closed, but without affecting vital organs, which horribly prolonged the torment. Additionally, there were also various fire-heated pokers, and hooks, and anything else the imagination could conceive in such cases. The reason for this madness was the pursuit of eternal youth. At that time, Elizabeth was 44 years old, an age that was considered old in those days. She longed to obtain eternal youth and the elixir to restore her energy and beauty, it was the blood of the tortured girls. She drank their blood, took long baths in the red fluid, tore their flesh with the help of her servants, and committed acts so atrocious that they are almost impossible to believe. Stories of her cruelty towards the staff spread so far, that local families hid their daughters so they would not be in her service. For a while, she remained unpunished because she chose her victims from among the servants and peasants, whom at that feudal time, a noble could treat as objects. But after the death of her assistant Darvulia, Elizabeth forgot about precautions and began to murder young women from good families as well. In 1609, at least for a while, Bathory opened a gynoseum, a boarding school where the almost child daughters of minor nobility could learn etiquette and the necessary customs to navigate the court. Their parents were unaware that they were sending them to hell.
Every three weeks, one of Bathory's students died. The Countess used different excuses to justify the deaths, illness, escape, or even that they had been murdered by other students. Rumors of these strange disappearances soon reached the court, where Bathory did not have many sympathizers. King Matthias ordered the case to be investigated by Count Thurzo, a cousin of Elizabeth's who was at odds with her. Thurzo and his soldiers entered the castle without resistance, and there, according to them, were the drained bodies and the torture instruments. With the testimony of dozens of witnesses, Bathory was arrested and imprisoned in Catchtis Castle for the murder of 80 young women, although some witnesses estimated the number of corpses at over 600. However, the Countess was never convicted. Instead, four of Bathory's servants were convicted of the violence exerted against the young women in her castle. The law prevented Elizabeth, a noblewoman, from being prosecuted. Instead, she was locked up in her castle. After being introduced into her quarters, the masons sealed doors and windows, leaving only a small hole for food to pass through. Finally, King Matthias II of Hungary demanded her head for the young aristocrats, who supposedly had died at her hands, but her cousin convinced him to postpone the execution of the life sentence. So she was sentenced to life imprisonment in solitary confinement. This sentence also implied the confiscation of all her properties, which Matthias had been coveting for a long time. On July 31, 1614, Elizabeth, at the age of 54, dictated her will and last wishes to two priests from the Cathedral of the Archbishopric of Estergum. She ordered that what was left of the family possessions be divided among her children. On August 21, 1614, one of the jailers saw her lying on the floor face down. Countess Elizabeth Bathory was dead after spending for long years locked up without even seeing the sunlight. They tried to bury her in the church of Catchtis, but the local inhabitants refused. Finally, as she was one of the last descendants of the ex-line of the Bathory family, she was buried in the Bathory family crypt in the village of Ext, in northeastern Hungary. The National Archives of Hungary preserve abundant documentation about her, particularly personal letters and trial records. However, her mythical diaries, like her original portrait, remain whereabouts unknown. <laughs>